Hello, welcome to our Ask the Expert series that we've been doing. Um, and today we are really having a very exciting program. I'm Dr. G, uh, founder of My Goal. And um, I work collaboratively with Dr. Rose um, Marola, who is a developmental pediatrician and her practice is at St. Peter's University Hospital in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, she sees individuals with developmental disabilities and more than that, she's also a professor and teaches um, pediatric residents. Um, these are physicians who are, who are specializing in pediatrics and some of them go on to subspecialize. And as part of their training, they usually will have a time with her to do what we call a rotation, where they have an opportunity to um, take care of individuals with developmental disabilities. And recently when I was having a conversation with Dr. Marola, we talked about beginning to do a parent series and a parent education series. And at that time she shared with me that she had one of her, pedi her pediatric residents, um, who's a physician, Dr. Bandu, and had recently done a topic for the other physicians. And she felt that this would be really great for us to share and have parents really learn more about what your children are watching, and then even just from video games and things like that. So um, I reached out to Dr. Bendu and said, hey, would you mind sharing that information with us? And so I'm very excited to have Dr. Bendu um, present to us today. And uh, you know, he's a first year, completing his first year residency here at St. Peter's University Hospital. And so I'm gonna you know, warmly welcome you. Thank you so much for doing this for our families. Um, and you know, we know that people will be in inspired to not pay attention to what to determine whether to watch or not to watch with their children and know that the things that they are they are engaged in in viewing so at this point i want to invite dr bendu to um present his do his presentation and if you want to share a word or two about yourself that'd be great too so thank you for the introduction hi my name is dr anaru bandu i'm one of the pediatric residents at st peter's university hospital pediatric residency program uh, I'm currently finishing off my first year, going into my second year of my three-year uh, residency. So today's uh, topic that we're going to be talking about is called watch or not to watch. And this is basically a, the whole topic on what parents, should, what parents should know about what their children are watching and how to assess if it's appropriate or not. What watch or not watch? That was the intro. Sorry, one second. Sorry, um, okay, yes. Okay, so the goal of the presentation is to teach parents about how to identify what shows are appropriate and to teach parents about what video games are also appropriate. So 10 p.m., do you know what your children are watching? This is a funny statement, but it's also true. Why is it true? Because at 10 p.m., there's something which we call the watershed time. So watershed time is what materials are unsuitable for children that those start at, uh, those are allowed to be aired on TV. This time, it specifically starts around 10 p.m. So even child-friendly channels like Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon shows can actually show adult-themed cartoons or sitcoms aimed for more teenagers and adults. So like, for example, in Nickelodeon, they have a program called Nick at Night, which show mainly Friends and George Lopez, which are two of the more bigger sitcoms. On Cartoon Network, around that time, they show two more adult-themed um, cartoons like Toonami or a, a whole program called Adult Swim. So how do we know if certain shows are appropriate for our children? So the one way to find out is to use the television content rating system. Now, this rating system appears before every single channel or every single uh, TV show, and it's based off two things. One is the audience content, uh, the, audience, uh, uh, audience label, the audience label, and the content label. So we'll talk more about the audience label. So it's split into multiple categories. The first one we're going to talk about is TVY, and TVY is designed to be appropriate for all children. For example, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. The next one is TVY7, which is designed for children's age seven and above. And these, and an example of this would be SpongeBob SquarePants. Now TPG is suitable for all ages, but it's not specifically designed for children. And a good example of this is Full House, 
where it shows, you know, themes that young children can understand and were more or less can, should, should watch with an adult, but it's not really aimed for young children. The next one is called TVPG and it's called Parental Guidance. So this show, these type of shows or rated TVPG are suggested to have parents should watch with their younger children. And an example of this would be one of the TV shows of, about a superhero called The Flash. Now, the next one is called TV 14. And the reason why is that it contains material that many parents would find unsuitable for children under 14 years of age. And a good example of this is Friends. Now, the last one is for adult audiences only. So anyone above the age of 17. So this program is known to be called TVMA for mature audiences. Now, an example of this is Game of Thrones. So these are the kind of shows that you do not want any children to be watching. Because this is not appropriate for anyone under the age of 17. So even if someone's 13 and want to watch a show, you have to, as a parent, you should be, no, this show is not appropriate for that age. So children's programming is basically we're rated with two, within two categories, TVY and TV7. So these rating systems are also, are also classified under for the made-for-TV movies. So movies that are actually filmed and made straight to the TV rather than going to theaters will have to follow this rating system. Even movies that have actually been in theaters are, and, and transitioning to TV shows actually have to be edited when they air and broadcast on cable channels, and they follow this system too. For more information on the TV guidelines and also for the TV ratings, visit www.tvguidelines.org. Now, what about video games? One thing for parents to understand is they have to watch the content that, the, that their child plays on video games. And how do we do that? They need to understand the rating system, which we'll, we'll talk about shortly. So the, how, the rating system is done by the Entertainment Software Rating Board, or ESRB for short. Now, these have four main categories. First one is rated E for everybody. Now, this content is generally suitable for all ages and contain minimal violence or infrequent use of mild language. A good examples of this are sports games. For example, Madden or NBA 2K and FIFA. Any sports games are rated E for everybody because anybody at, all, at any age can actually play this game. Next one is E 10 and above. Now 10 and above is basically content suitable for children who are only ages 10 and up and they may contain more cartoon, fantasy, or mild violence. If they have mild suggestive language or minimal suggestive themes. A good example of this is Super Smash Brothers. Now, why is this 10 and above? Even though it has cartoons like Super Mario, Pikachu, and other games that your child has been playing who are younger than 10, it's because it has the whole element of violence where the cartoon characters are, have to fight each other. So that fighting makes this game suitable for 10 and above only. The next rating we want to talk about is where most of the games fall, undo, fall into, and this is rated T for teen. Now, this content is generally suitable for ages 13 and up because of the same thing. It contains probably more graphic violence, more suggestive themes, crude humor, minimal blood, or could also simulate small amount of gambling. A good example of this is Horizon Zero Dawn. And this is a game is has more fantasy base. And because it's more fantasy and requires more fighting, it's more or less suited for ages 13 and up. Now the last one is for adults only. And this is rated M for mature. And this content is usually for children who are aged 17 and older. And why is because it has more intense violence intense blood, gore, and sexual content, which is not suitable for children anywhere less than 17. And a good example of this is modern warfare. Another one we want to say is that, the, uh, that a lot of kids play is Star Wars games. 
Now, Star Wars games, you may think, is actually good for children, like, say, eight or so, but it's actually rated T. So only children who are 13 and up should be playing this game. Another example of rated M is Grand Theft Auto. Even though it has a cartoon feel to it, it's not really suitable for any children less than 17. So where does Fortnite land? Now, because Fortnite has gained a lot of popularity within the pediatric population in terms of the games that everyone plays, let's take a look at how we should look at Fortnite and see which, which age group is appropriate for this game. Now, if you have the cover, one thing you want to look at is the logo. Now, on the logo down there is rated T for teen. Now, if you remember, T teen for teen is appropriate for 13 years of age and up. So if an 18-year-old should not be playing Fortnite. Five-year-old should not be playing Fortnite. A 10-year-old should not be playing Fortnite. And a 12-year-old should not be playing Fortnite. Now, why is that? It's because Fortnite also has some elements of violence, even though it could be a lot of building and a lot of um, cartoon-like you know, environment, it still has a good amount of violence in it. Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics which is the government body for, that, the pediat that all pediatricians follow, has few recommendations and policies regarding media in children. First policy is that anyone younger than two years of age should not have any media time, meaning no TV, no cell phone, no YouTube, no video games, other than video chatting with their relatives. Anyone from the ages from two to five should only get no more than one hour of high quality programming that includes, again, TV, YouTube, and some video games, which are educational video games. Now, parents are also encouraged to create tech-free zones and times. So, for example, during dinner time, there should be no TV on, no cell phones on. There should be only you guys at the dinner table talking. Or homework time, where if someone has to do homework, you make sure nothing else, no cell phones, no TVs are on, and they're sitting there doing that homework and they don't get to turn the TV on or use a cell phone until the homework is done. The, sec the fourth is that parents are encouraged not to use technology as an emotional pacifier. So this should not be the way to calm your kids down because that will only teach them that whenever they cry or if they cause a tantrum, that they'll get, that they'll get a TV or they'll get the TV time. You should also set limits and encourage playtime because kids really need it. So they should not be spending four hours on TV and staying at home inside. You should really encourage them to go play outside and play with their friends. Parents should know your children's friends both online and off. Because now most of these games you play online and you can play with people all across the world. It's up to the parents to make sure that they're playing, that they know who their kids are playing with online and make sure that there's nothing that they're also safe online and again the quality of the content that they see or play matters now for more information on the video game rating system you should visit www.esrb.org thank you that was very well done um dr bandu wow <laughs> I, I can honestly say that I never used to pay attention to any of these things because we just never thought of it. Um, so Jenny, what, what are your thoughts as you read, you heard his presentation and what are in terms of your feedback? Yeah, very important. I'm curious what the information about YouTube is because there are, um, you know, Y7, YouTube, especially YouTube kids. And what would you say? A lot of the parents who, you know, my son watches YouTube Kids, it's available on the television and on tablets. So what, what should, you know, we be on the lookout for that? So again, according to the AAP guidelines, they, even if YouTube still counts as screen time. So if, let's say that if a child who is two and older, they should be watching only educational videos. But again, parents should only limit that to no more than one hour. Okay, good to know. I, I also am curious, I know that a lot of families would probably be curious about this too, regarding those recommendation times, what 
is your opinion now that we are all sort of stuck inside due to COVID and screen time has certainly increased, you know, what should we either A, be expecting or B, what can we do to maybe to make it more educational because we are, you know, we can't really go out and play with our friends these days. Yes. So again, if when they do the screen time, a lot of the screen time that we've been seeing, in, especially in Dr. Moreau's office, is about the um, their the services that they get, usually in terms of early intervention or speech therapy. But for the ones who are actually inside, again, it's better that parents still limit their um, the screen time in terms of the YouTube, but and then should encourage to actually play themselves, parents themselves, play with the children more rather than having, I mean, I understand about the whole taking them on a play date or anything, but still parks are open. They can still take to the park, but it's better to have them to limit their screen time rather than having them fall back into the whole category of, oh, it's okay. Let them, you know, watch as much as they want you because we're inside. So, that's great. Dr. Ben, do I have a question? Sorry, yes. What's your thoughts on educational videos for children? So, the, again, the educational videos, they could help out, but still, according to the AAP guidelines, it, even with the educational videos, no more than one hour is actually recommended. So, the educational videos, yes, they could be a good, they count as a high quality program. Those educational videos are actually falling to the high quality program like we spoke before. So they are actually encouraged, but, but again, only limit them to one hour. And I'm assuming that has the same to do with video games, that screen time, it, it should go by those guidelines as well? Yes. This was really, really, really <laughs> Like for example, um, Jenny, while, back when I was growing up, we had video games that were educational on the computers. For example, we had clue finders, which made us do mathematical uh, problems to, you know, go to the next level and serve word problems to get to the next level. But we only did it for an hour at a time. So even though like it's an educa educational games can actually help a lot in terms of progressing, we still need to limit it just because, you know, sitting at the computer for too long can actually have negative effects on how the, the child develops, especially since they're only like looking at the screen and not actually talking to anybody. That's interesting, especially because I know for my son, he's five, recently being stuck at home, uh, he was highly encouraged to do um, like ABC mouse on the, the, the computer or a tablet. Um, but you know, his attention span does not last an hour on screen time. So I, I guess that works for him. Um, I do, I would like to say thank you for this because as soon as you started talking about my son plays a game on a tablet and I, I never looked at the um, age of it. And just looking at it, it says, um, it, it, it's the one for uh, 10 year olds that they should, so he will be, that will be deleted from his tablet and we will not be playing that anymore. So thank you. No uh, problem, thank I, you. I was gonna say that's great. Um, I also wanted to just comment about, does video chat, count as part of um you know the plate the you know screen time because now that's one no. of the things that we do okay so it's no, really no, no. video chat doesn't count because the main in, in the main difference is interaction with somebody so we were video chatting you're actually talking to someone and someone's reacting to your to the to the child talking it's not just a one-way thing where the child just clicks on something and doesn't get any kind of vocal reaction or emotional reaction I see. I think that's a very important point because a lot of us hear screen time and we're not even processing that video chatting could be one of the strategies we can use. So, Jenny, to your point about play dates, perhaps the play dates could be activities that people are engaging with their friends and then playing something like the scavenger hunt idea and things like that could be Right, yeah. Yep. Yeah, because oftentimes we just hear, don't do, you know, just make sure you don't, you limit screen time, but there's no strategies on how to avoid having screen time. Yeah. Wow, this was a very good presentation. 
Um, really appreciate your time and your expertise this afternoon. Um, I, you know, we know that there are parents that are going to watch. And so one of the things we wanted to do was be able to do a before and after knowledge assessment which um, Dr. Bendu is gonna help put, us to put together and then we'll share that with families so we can see the impact of this education mm -hmm. on families. And already you saw Jenny's like already making changes. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so once again, thank you so much for your time. This was a really worthwhile presentation and very valuable to our families. And so once again, thank you. Well, thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to present this. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Thank you. Time.